It's rainy and a little bit chilly here in Georgia, but I'm headed down south in the morning to Mayo Clinic for some more treatments. I just wanna say thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, from everybody that sent the encouraging words, um, praying for me, and that kind of thing. I'm gonna see these treatments through until I'm better. For right now though, I got part two of the fire pit build here for you. Let's do it. Okay, this is part two of the fire pit build. In part one, I used a torch switch to tack weld it, and then also the torch switch with the 4T setting to weld out some outside corner joints. And I also explained how to kind of get the most out of the 4T setting and the 2T setting on the torch switch. All machines are a little bit different. Some of them have upslope and downslope on both 2T and 4T. Some machines, the 2T setting is, is a pretty much an on-off switch. Either way, knowing what they do will help you get the most out of your machine. I wound up having just a few little gaps in some of the outside corner joints, but I'm gonna MIG weld these so they're, they're not gonna give me any problems at all. That's the good thing about a short circuit MIG welder is you can uh, plow ahead with a small gap like that, and actually it'll kind of aid in getting penetration. It'll sink right in there. I welded a few sample pieces at 200 inches a minute. They did fine too, but I'm going to dial it back just to slow everything down a little bit to about 150 inches a minute. Again, this is 035 wire. This machine's also got inductance setting on it, so I'm going to set it max on 10. I liked what that did to the arc. It made a nice soft arc that went in really nice. One of, the, one of the benefits of a inductance setting is when you can set it pretty high, you can also lower the wire feed speed and not hardly get any spatter. It makes for a really nice arc. And I'm just taking my time here. Again, going along at a fairly slow pace. I've done enough little sample joints to know that I'm, I'm getting plenty of penetration through this 11 gauge. We'll take a look at the backside when I'm finished. But that's not a very fast travel speed and I'm not in a hurry here. You know, I've only got four outside corners to go. And then, of course, I'll tack weld the legs on, make sure they don't wobble, and weld them out, and then this thing will be done. It's a super fun project. I can prop it up here and get everything really accessible. I'm pretty comfortable. I'm just propping and dragging along. And I've only got to go about, I don't know the exact dimensions of this thing, but it's uh, you know somewhere between 18 inches and 2 feet. So I'm not even really tired by the time I get to one run, even at this slow travel speed. Short circuit MIG was made for doing something like this, for an outside corner joint on 11 gauge or even 3 16 inch thick. It just, just kind of lays right in there. Before we go much further though, let's flip it over and check the backside just to make sure, did we get penetration? Check the puddle out here. And in a way it kind of looks like it's just laying up on top there. But a quick look at the back side shows us we got plenty of penetration on the TIG welds as well as the MIG welds. Before we put the legs on, I'm going to show you a few clips from another fire pit build I did with my good friend J.D. Brewer. While I was there, I got to pet his shop dog. And like Theo Vaughn says, when you pet a dog and it lets you, it don't run off, mm, that's good. We used the Lincoln 210 MP for this one, slightly different settings, 20 volts and 280 inches a minute. JD was doing the welding on this one. You can see he's just using a slight push and moving along without any real manipulation of any kind. And this is quarter inch thick diamond plate here, or tread plate, and it's sinking in there really, really nice too, but with hotter settings. So short circuit MIG is very adaptable. You don't want to get carried away and weld some one inch structural stuff with short circuit MIG. The codes frown on that, but for general light fabrication like this, it's great. I'll show the settings, exact settings and everything here in just a second. 20 volts, 280 inches a minute, C25 gas, 035 wire. When my friend Matt Hayden laid this thing out and designed this thing, he put the, the, uh, the breathing holes in the bottom in kind of a pattern diagonally. So you really can, you don't even have to lay out the legs. Uh, it, you kind of just eyeball them along with the, the holes and it really can't, you really can't go wrong. If you space them evenly from the corner and eyeball them along the, the lines of those holes that were cut in there for it to breathe, you can't go wrong. It's just really easy. That is if the legs were bent accurately and we're going to find out very shortly if they were. So once I get a tack on this thing, 
I'm going to turn it up, be nice and easy with it, and just see if it teeters or totters or anything, and it doesn't at all. And so I'm going to get another tack on it in place right here. Tacking it in place rather than flipping it over again will kind of make me almost sure that it's not going to wobble when I weld it all the way out. So I get a little tack in place here on all four legs, flip it over, and weld it out, and we'll be done with this thing here shortly. In the part one video, someone commented and asked why it's got Roll Tide and Go Dogs on it. That's because it's for my brother-in-law, and he is both a fan of Georgia and Alabama, except when they play one another, in which case he's Roll Tide all the way. I'll get a nice little fillet weld on everywhere I can on these little uh, bent legs, and then I will throw some rattle can uh, high heat paint on this thing and I'll show you that finished product man in just a few seconds let's flip it over and see if it teeter totters at least a little bit and not a not a single bit I wish I could show you the finished product with a fire in it glowing through those cutouts but unfortunately I went in the hospital before I could do that hey before we go let me ask you something do you take notes like if you find a certain amperage setting or a certain aluminum setting that worked just great on something, you write that down for future reference. I've never have really been a big note taker in my career, but I've got friends who, who do it religiously, uh, pipe welders and things like that. And they write down, they write down notes and they have like a journal that they can refer to. It's kind of like almost like a bank of preliminary WPSs or something like that. And, and I, I was able to refer to some previous videos for these last two videos that I did and get dial it in at the exact setting, but I would have been able to do the same thing if I had just written some stuff down. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. I'll see you next time. This is the machine that I used in this video. It's a Prime Weld MTS 200. MTS stands for MIG TIG Stick, so it does lift arc TIG and stick as well as MIG. If you want to learn more about it, you can go to weldmonger.com.